What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech. Today we're going to be working with the Jet KVM again and hopefully we're going to be making it better with today's project. We're going to try to make the KVM better by using the EZQ KVM switch with it. So the Jet KVM can control multiple computers. In this case we can control up to four at one time and we can rotate between all of them through the Jet KVM and we need no physical interaction at the actual EZQ KVM switch level. This makes it if you're not on site or you're remote from where your servers or whatever you're trying to manage is, you can still switch between all the devices through the Jet KVM. And I'm gonna show you how to do all that in this day's video. And I'm gonna give you a quick demo of what we are gonna be able to do right now. So here we are in my Jet KVM. And if you see over here on the top left, I have different keyboard macros that I entered. So right now you can see I'm on mini lab. I can switch over here to mini backups and I can click again and I can switch into bar mine tech. It should load up in a second. And now you can see I loaded into bar mine tech. I have full access to type in. You can see I have, I can type some commands. I can switch between and when it does load up, I am able to have full keyboard access of the machine you can see i can come over here and i can list out my virtual machines i, I have full bare bones access to the servers through the jet kvm and the easy kvm switch so today we're going to be talking about setting this project up and what we're able to do and some of my thoughts now on the kvm and the easy switch together one thing I want to put out there, this is something that was just a project I wanted to work on. If you're not familiar, maybe you're new to the channel, I do have one of the mini 10 inch server racks and I have all of my stuff racked up in there. So I have about three of my servers in there when we have Barmine Tech, the mini backup server and my mini lab server. They're all on a 10 inch rack, they're tucked away in the corner and really they're a pain to manage. If I do need to get SSH access or I need to get into a monitor, it's really a hassle for me. So getting the Jet KVM was supposed to be a really nice add-on for me so I can just put it in there and be able to access my machines. The issue still comes is that it can only control one machine at a time with its default setup. You could add additional breakouts and stuff like that and there's probably other methods like on the Pi KVM there's multiple supported or will work KVM switches to work with. However, on the Jet KVM, I was only able to find the one that's a solid, reliable option, and it was the same for the Pi KVM as well. So I purchased it so I could rack it and connect it to all of my servers in my rack to make management much easier so I don't need to unrack them and have an issue of along those lines. So this is mainly why I did it. This isn't a sponsored video. This wasn't somebody asked me to make this content. This is purely for me because I didn't want to have the hassle of working on my machines in my rack anymore. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out and now we can get into the video. I'm going to show you now the KVM switch and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the setup. So this is the EZQ KVM switch. It is currently available on Amazon and it has a 5% coupon. It's a very simple small KVM switch. I was actually surprised of how small it is but if you take a look through the pictures, we'll look at the first one. We have our connections in. So over here would be from your computers or your servers into the KVM. The output over here, which I have highlighted, is going to be the output. This is what's going to go to your actual KVM, such as the Jet KVM or an additional one. They do include the USB cables you will need to connect the KVM switch to your device. However, they do not come with HDMI cables. You need to get those on your own. At $140 for this device, I think it was well worth it if it comes over to the long term of the hassle I would have unracking my devices, getting them connected to a monitor, and so on. Now, of course, I'm using a Jet KVM for mine. That's because I was lazy. I 3D printed the rack mount for myself, and when I found the file on printables, I only found one that worked nicely with a Jet KVM. There are other ones for Pi KVMs. You can design your own, whatever it might be. This project will work with a Pi KVM as well. Just today, we're talking about the Jet KVM. Now that we've talked about the KVM switch we're using, we've previously talked about the Jet KVM. I just want to show a quick diagram. It's a very high level technical diagram that I drew up. Over here we have our EZQ KVM. Over here on the right is the Jet KVM. And these boxes up here are going to be our servers or our computers. This might be in a rack, it might be in a stack on a desk, it might be however it might be. So what we're going to do is, like I was showing, we have the four inputs that would be over here 
to go from the KVM switch to the devices you want to manage. You have another input that would be over here that's going to go to the Jet KVM. And then of course finally we have the EasyCoo KVM over here connect and everything. You're going to have USB and HDMI cables running from the KVM switch to the devices you're trying to manage or control. You're going to need to check if your device outputs to HDMI, DisplayPort, or any kind of other video connector. If it's not HDMI, you are going to need to get adapters. What I ended up doing was getting short HDMI cables and then my device's output at DisplayPort. So I got HDMI to DisplayPort adapters and that's what these cables would represent along with the USB cables to tie them back together. Over here, the connection to the Jet KVM from the EasyCoo switch is going to be similar. It's going to be an HDMI and a USB input. So it's going to come from the EasyCoo switch. There's going to be an HDMI input and a USB input. And it's going to go over here to the Jet KVM. The Jet KVM provides cables for power and mini HDMI to HDMI. The Jet KVM is mini HDMI, but they provide you the cable to go to full size HDMI. There's going to be a power connector that comes out of the EasyCoo KVM that needs to go in. It's just a simple barrel jack that goes to a power adapter. And then the Jet KVM receives its power from USB-C to USB that's going to connect to whatever device. So when you do connect it over to the EasyCoo switch, it'll power the Jet KVM. I tried to make this diagram really simple. And again, if I pull up the sheet over here, you can see these are the inputs. And really, this is all you're going to be working with. You can see there's two USB inputs, one for a mouse, one for a keyboard. I only have mine in for a keyboard. I was seeing some people were mentioning that for the mouse options, they were putting in like a vent or USB drive, and it was another way to pass through media to the, the devices being managed through the KVM. Like I said, I hope this makes sense and makes understanding the setup a little bit easier. It is a mess of wires, and I have mine all racked up, and my rack is a mess. There's really not much to see over there overall. I'll drop in a picture of my rack with everything mounted. And I also 3D printed the mount if you're interested in checking that out. That's going to be on Barmine Prints. And I'll have a link down to that channel as well. It's just a 3D printing channel. And you can see some of the mounts that I've printed for the home lab. I've previously done a video on the Jack KVM where we talk about the setup and my thoughts on it. Some additional features that I was able to configure by looking around is these keyboard macros over here. And I was mentioning this earlier, the Jet KVM is actually able to send macros to the EasyCoo switch to tell it to switch inputs. You can physically switch the inputs on the actual device and they give you a remote that you could also switch from. But if you're not on site, you need a way to be able to switch devices and that's where these macros come in handy. For whatever reason, you can see there's some sort of delay in the switch and that's why it gives me that HDMI warning. Usually it goes away, it just takes a second I guess with the switching and how the Jack KVM connects, but if you refresh it seems to bring it up right away. I'm going to show you how to go over and add the keyboard macros. The one thing I do want to mention is one of my biggest gripes I've had with this project so far. And if you see over here where I have all these D's that are just randomly entered, that wasn't me typing it, that was a bug in the Jack KVM software which just kept pressing whatever key I pressed at one point until it decided to stop. I looked into it online, it's a known issue. There doesn't seem to be any resolution from the developers. The only resolution I was able to find was I come over here to settings, I'm gonna come to hardware, and under classes, I unchecked the options for keyboard, mouse, and mouse storage, and did keyboard only. I tried doing custom so I can keep keyboard and the USB storage, that didn't work, it only worked with keyboard only. You can see the sentence applied, and then we're back. If I turn it back on, I bet you it will come over here and it'll start continuously inputting all of the keys. So it is very delayed, and now you can see over here, it it's just keeps pressing it. So if I turn this off, uh, I'm gonna do keyboard only again. And you see it stopped. And it's a little delayed, but now it's it's picking back up. The sentence must have applied, and you can see it's only typing one at a time now. So if you are using the Jet KVM and you're having a similar issue, try that and it should resolve your issue. This is a big gripe for me because if you are trying to use KVM access, you're trying to enter passwords, whatever it might be, 
if the keys keep repeating and you can't see what's being typed because it's some sort of password entry or whatever it might be, this is a hassle. You're trying to do updates and now the keys are constantly repeated. Maybe you put the wrong flag in, you might have broke a system. This is really a hassle to use and it's for me it's annoying that I need to go here and change how the device operates because of some software bug as it appears to be. I'm hoping that the developers or whoever's working on the latest updates are working on trying to find a fix for this, but it is very frustrating that we have an issue like this. Enough of that little rant. Let's go over to set up the keyboard macros really quick. So to do that, we're going to come back to settings and then we're going to come to keyboard macros. Now you can see over here, I already have mine entered. So I'm going to show you how to add the keyboard macro for switching across. I'm going to do it for the fourth input. You could do it for the first three or however you might want to do it. You just need to change the number and that's how it matches up. So we're going to click add new macro. I'm going to name it KVM4. It's going to be left control and we could just click it right here. The time duration is going to be 200 milliseconds. We're going to add another step. It's going to be left control again, another 200 milliseconds. We're going to do another step. And now it's going to be whatever the number is for you trying to switch to. So I'm going to be four. And again, it's going to be 200 milliseconds. We're going to click save. And now you can see they should all match up. And the important one is the last key that's being pressed. And that's how it signals which input to change to. So now this would work. I can come back here. And you can see I now have four inputs. I'm going to get an HDMI failure because there's no device plugged into there. But I can switch back and forth and you can see now I get my different devices. So it's just a nicer way to be able to switch between your inputs while you're remote through the Jack KVM. This was a major upgrade to the Jack KVM for me, just for the capabilities of being able to control more than one device at a time. Move the cables and move it around, risk unplugging something because I have to pull it out of the rack, whatever it might be. It took me a couple hours to get everything working and that's just because of how my rack is a mess so it was a little tricky for me then I broke stuff because I guess the CMOS battery is dead in one of my mini PCs so everything was just a hiccup it booted to secure boot it was really a hassle but that's not really the KVM's fault and as you can see Jet KVM is working pretty well for this I do have my gripes which I mentioned earlier but I do think this is a really good project and I really hope they keep up with it and offer additional updates and keep supporting it. If you are interested in grabbing the EasyCoo Switch, I'll have a link down below. And if you are interested in getting the Jet KVM, I'll have a link down below to that as well if you want to build this project yourself. So that was my major upgrade to the Jet KVM. The KVM isn't something that I use all the time, but it is nice to have running all the time now in case I do need it. It saves me the hassle of having to set it up and it's just there, I can connect and I could switch between my devices to do whatever I might need. I was using the Pi KVM a lot because the Pi KVM just worked a little bit better for my video inputs. The Jet KVM is going to be what I'm going to be using primarily for my devices in my rack and then if I have other devices I'll use my Pi KVM. Of course I don't use a KVM daily so it's just more of a I have it in case I need it kind of tool but when I do need it I bet it's going to come in very handy and this upgrade is going to be a really nice touch in case something happens. I do hope you guys enjoy this little project in this video. If you are interested in making one yourself, I will have a link down to the printables file. I'll have a link to the KVM switch. And like I said, I'll have a link to the Jet KVM. I appreciate you all for watching. I'll have all the other links for all the other gear in my home lab down below as well if you want to check it out. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you want to join up. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate all the support we've had in the last month or so. The channel has been booming, and it's all because of you. Again, I want to thank you all for watching, and as my buddy Dom would say, hack till it hurts.